Okay, hello, hello. Welcome back. All right, let me get logged on really quick so I can see. I just like to make sure that I'm in frame. This light is kind of hitting me right in the eyes. Hopefully I'm not shaking you guys too much. Sorry about that. Okay. There we are. Awesome. All right. I am excited to come back and share with you, with you some of the stuff I showed you this morning. I have a little bit of time while baby Stampin' Hands is taking a nap right now. <laughs> I think he had fun this morning. Okay. I'm going to find, I'm trying to decide which of all of these new stamp sets I want to play with. And I think I'm going to start with the Christmas barn. I just love this one and I just want to play with it and see oh and awesome it's a photo polymer I still have to um I still have to put all my cling stamps together <laughs> so I already pre-cut a bunch of pieces of just basic white and these are all cut at um, five by three and three quarters and so I cut them at that because um, I like to just decorate do whatever I want on a piece of paper, either way. And then I can um, add it to a, like a background border frame, whatever I want to put on the edge of it, and then it will fit on a card and have a nice, nice little graduation of um, layers. So we're going to start with one of these pieces of paper, and I'm literally just going to open this up and start playing. And I'm going to see, I like to actually go ahead and put, I, okay, I am so excited that they have started printing on the inside here because you can put all your stamps in here and then whenever you take one out, you can see which one's missing. And when, when I go to put them away, it's much easier to just look, open this and see, is any of them missing? We're good. They're all there. And then put it away. When before you'd kind of have to look at the front and make sure all of them were in there. And I love that they printed that inside in there for us to where you can just take off your stamps and lay them right down where they should go on top of the the printed section. And they're the same size, everything, it just fits right on top of it. So I'm so happy they started doing this. So I'm just going to take all these out, all these fun things. The one thing I, I do not care for as much is that they put a lot of things upside down which I don't don't understand why but whatever it's the way they printed it so a lot of them would fit um, right side up or whatever but it is what it is at least like I said at least you can look in there and see if any are missing which is what I like because see how it just fills them all in sorry that ring light always reflects on anything that's plastic. All right. Oh, how cute. I didn't see that before. You guys get my um, first reaction to, to new stamp sets. These are just so cute. I love all the little stuff that comes with this one. I love building scenes. But this could be so many different things. It could be this little stamp here. It could be, you know, footprints, tire marks. You could do two of them next to each other and they'd look like tire marks. Any kind of um, prints in the sand and stuff. Ah, oh, so fun. Okay. So, we'll bring back our piece of paper. And I really just want to experiment, play with my stamp set and see... You know how big everything is we're gonna start with just the barn I really just want to see how that looks on here so we'll use our mementos ink cuz I'm probably gonna color it in not gonna lie I grew up on a farm over 400 acres and um, you know, I was always out doing something on the farm, bucking hay bales, fixing fence, chasing cows, whatever. 
And uh, I'm going to put this more over here, I think. Let's see. I think we'll put it about right there. So yeah, that's why this stamp set like really speaks to me. It just, it looks like home to me. <laughs> and that's what I love. Let's see, I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do like the fence off this side and like a tree over here. Oh my goodness, I just love this too fun so we're just going to do it all in the mementos right now just to see how everything looks Ooh, that's a bit dark on top i'll have to not push so hard next time okay so, grab one of my other blocks here. I love this. This is going to make such pretty Christmas cards. It'll make pretty cards for anything for me. Because I know tons of farmers. Half my family all does the farming. So yeah, I love, love, love this fence and so many there's so many things I could do with it I'm trying to figure out where I want to use it which way I think I'm going to stick to my original idea just for now we're going to connect it to the back of the barn here and come out from the side awesome okay I think I'm going to leave it at that for now. Well, I don't know. Let's see. I want to add some of that. Hmm. I'm just looking at the stamp set and trying to decide if I want to add what I want to add where. Okay, I think we're going to leave it at that. I'm going to start coloring. We can always stamp more stuff on later. So that was all in mementos. And... I'm looking for, hold on a second, I'm trying to find my chamois so I can just go ahead and clean these really quick. I will end up touching them with my, excuse me, with my hand or my arm or anything. So better for me if I just clean them real quick. Okay. So let me see which markers I want to color with. I know I want a red for the barn, so which red? Do we want to do like cherry cobbler? I think probably, probably, because that's about the darkest red that we have. And we might, um, let me show you guys really quick something that I made. I have most of the Stampin' Blends. I still need to get a couple of, um, a couple of the new in colors. Sorry, I'm just digging through my stuff trying to find. So I made this, um, sheet for myself that I printed off and I just made it like, find an empty one. So I made it like this on, um, on the computer. Just, I think I used Microsoft Word and made a bunch of little tables and put the, the, um, color of all of them in there. So there's some of them I need to remove now because they are like the cinnamon cider, just jade, misty moonlight, magenta madness, some of the older, um, in colors I need to remove and and print a new one of these but this is what I do I put I print it off on our basic white because that's mostly what I color on and if you've used our blends then you you know they kind of turn out different on different um, thicknesses of paper so I wanted to find out you know how they would look just on the the basic white so I printed this off on there and then I took my blends and I colored on the, the left side I colored the light color and on the right side I colored the dark color 
that's on the real red, but this is the cherry cobbler. So this will tell you what it will look like. And so I like looking at these colors and seeing, hey, if I fade from this into this instead of from this into this, it does make it look a little bit more red and not as pink because that has a little bit more pink to it. And I'll bring this a little bit closer where you guys can hopefully see it a little bit better. But yeah, it it helps me be able to see, you know, the colors and how well they will blend a little bit easier. So I would suggest making one of these. Maybe I will find a way to upload it somewhere where you guys could print it off yourself. I will work on trying to do that for you. So I'll let you know if I ever have, um, this is like a PDF or something where you can print it off. But this helps me a lot when I'm using my blends to figure out which colors I want to use for the color that I'm looking for in my specific um, card. So I'm going to use, I am going to do that combination I said I'm going to use the dark cherry cobbler and the dark real red. So this is the dark. And here's the dark real red. And then we can even fade to the light real red in some areas if we want to. I do want to keep like the crop, the, so I'll show you guys this a little bit closer. I know it looks crazy far away. Hopefully that's clear so you can see it. Um, I want to keep like the, the cross sections on the door and the frames around the window and things like that a little bit more. I wish that would clear up a little bit. It's kind of still a little blurry. Anyways, you guys can kind of see it a little closer, but I want to leave those frames and things white and do red around it. So, um, I think I'm going to start with around those things I'm gonna do um, the medium like the dark real red I think I'm gonna start with that so I'm gonna do the the brush tip I just use that a lot more and these are such tiny pieces in between these so you have to be really really careful and I'm even getting them a little bit over the nice thing about the blends is that they they run into each other a little bit so it makes things easier for blending but also you have to be really careful when you're coloring because it likes to run so you don't want to go all the way to the edge of the line, or it looks like you've colored over the line sometimes. So you have to be really, really, really careful. But these are the most delicate areas, because like I said, they have such tiny spaces. And the rest of the barn should be hopefully a little easier to go over. The barn's probably the hardest part. We'll put a little green in the tree and then... I don't know. I mean, I love that they just put some lines here because this could be mud or it could be snow. So you can make it whatever time of year you want it to be. <laughs> Usually around the barn, it gets very muddy. Oh gosh, even a dab in those ones. <laughs> okay, I think I got in between all those. That's like the hardest part. So the rest of these is just kind of doing the frame around them and that's the nice thing about these blends too I love working with the blends because you don't get those harsh lines you get with other markers and things I have like a piece of fuzz on the end of that so yeah you don't get those harsh lines that you get you know when you just play with regular markers from the store or something the alcohol markers are really nice So I do some other coloring things where I just really splash the the color on and I don't get so detailed. And it's nice to be able to color that way. But there's some times where you really want to have the details show. And so you got to be really careful and color right along the edge of the line. <laughs> so then when I'm concentrating, I have a hard time talking too much.
I'm mainly just trying to get the edges of this to where when I start getting a little bit uh, more free-flowing with my hands, I won't get too close to any of these. Because we really want to do most of it in the light color. Uh, I had to leave my phone on just in case because I've been trying trying to get a hold of someone and so I'm worried they're going to try and call me back while I'm doing my video so I'm sorry my phone is on all right so I've gotten all the windows in the front we're going to go on the side here and kind of just go between all these windows And then across the bottom of each of them and across the top. Now it's starting to look more um, where you can pick things out and understand what they are. <laughs> so the one thing about this is I think they left the roof, you know, without any lines or anything in it just because it looks like it has snow on the top. All right, I'm going to put the medium, or the medium, the medium color that we're using, but this is the dark, real red. I'm going to put that away. I'm going to go ahead and use the dark cherry cobbler, and we're going to come in and do some shadowing. So I'm thinking, which way do we want the sun coming from? I'm thinking it's coming from over here and shining this way. So the shadows would kind of go back, and we'll have a little bit of a shadow under this ridge here where the roof sticks out and I think it's going to be a little bit more in the back than it would be in the front and then under this whole edge here we'll have some shadowing And this side, see, I think the sun's shining there. So, like, if anything, it would just be a tiny little line there. And I think back here we'll do a little bit more because I feel like it gets kind of dark back in this corner. And so we're kind of just blending into the color that's already there. All right. Now we're going to come through with our light color, which is our light real red. And we're just going to color over everything with this color. Sorry, I'm so quiet during this part. <laughs> I'm just concentrating, just blocking in color, get all of that filled in. And then we'll go back with our dark real red. I mean, that looks pretty good anyways. You can't hardly see any lines, but we'll go back in where, where you see any kind of line and we'll just kind of scribble around it to kind of make it blend and these will just blend out into the other colors I think it turned out pretty pretty good actually and you can see the the darkness underneath the um, roof coming over all right I think that looks pretty good 
All right. Oh, you know what the spot I did miss was this little section here on top. And then what do I want to do for, so a lot of, um, a lot of the barn buildings and stuff have just like a gray, I think I might do like my smoky slate or gray granite. Either one of them would work fine. Hmm. I think I'll do, I think I'll do the gray granite actually. I feel like gray granite is um is a lot warmer of a gray and I think it would look really pretty like uh give you the feeling of um you know the sun reflecting off the roof or something like that. So we'll kind of start over here. This is the dark and we're just going to put in shadows. I think the ridge over here We'll just do dark. All right, and I think just do a little bit down here that's kind of dark. And then the rest of it, we will fill in with the light. Looks like it's about time to get a new gray granite blend set. <laughs> it's getting a little bit used. And usually when I fill in with the light, I just go right over the top of the dark that was there. And you can see how it made that part of the the barn look darker. Okay, so that's the majority of what we're going to color. We'll probably put a little bit of green and brown in our tree here. For that, I think I'll use a little bit of the light um, mossy meadow. And really, there's just like a couple spots that you can kind of fill in. A lot of it has the dark in it. Which another way to do this tree is to stamp it in the green and then just kind of use the brown and go down the trunk. But then the outline of the trunk would be green. So, I don't know. It's up to you, I guess. I mean, green isn't far from brown, so I'm sure they'd blend well together and you wouldn't hardly tell. But... totally up to you okay so the light mossy meadow and then I think we'll do like maybe the dark suede the dark soft suede I think is this one yes All right, I love it. It's looking wonderful. Okay, so I'm trying to decide. I think I think I want to make this look more like summertime. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my blends away for now. And I'm going to bring in my blending brushes. And let me find... This one I've used for green, and I want to use like a brown. Um, it looks like I don't really have a dark brown one, so I might use my tan. Okay, and we're going to bring in... I think I'm going to do the early espresso, and like some old olive. Let's do that. All right. And you know, I don't like getting my work surface really covered, so we're going to bring in a scratch piece of paper here. 
All right, and we're going to do, oops, I used the wrong one. <laughs> that doesn't help. Okay. So we're going to do some grassy area over here. And I'm just coming from the edge in. I don't want to get too far above the fence there. Just like halfway to where it kind of looks like there's pasture on both sides. We can come up here to the front with it. All right, and then we'll put a little bit over here. We'll see how that looks. All right, and then I think I want to do some parts that are a little bit closer. I hope I don't ruin it doing this, but I'm going to bring in my daubers and well, maybe. <laughs> All right, I don't have a whole bunch on here yet, but I want to get in a little bit closer to the barn here. So we're just going to use the edge of the dauber and do some really light, small little circles and then kind of stretch it out to a little bit bigger lines. And that will help us get in a little bit closer without going over the the edge of the, the barn there, end up mixing green and red and that makes brown. <laughs> so we don't want that. We're going to put a little bit of uh, grass back in here behind the tree. All right. I like that. Now we're going to bring in the brown. So we'll close up our old olive. We'll bring in our early espresso. Ooh, that's dark. I forgot I re-inked this. That's why you always start off off your project. You don't want to destroy it. You can always make it darker. When you first re-ink stuff, though, it makes it really, like, it gives a lot of um, shapes in there so you don't get as smooth of um, blending. So you have to be really careful at first. So we're just going to shade this color in here, and this will just make it look like the dirt, you know, leading up to the barn. So this is a cool way to see how it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be a um, Christmas scene, it doesn't have to be um, snow and everything, you know, you can make it look, well actually I'm going to use the dauber on this too and put a little bit more texture in there so you can make it look just like a summer day you know on the farm <laughs> as well so early espresso okay and this one I want to get some some uh, nice lines in here that looks more like texture in the ground you know so it's not so smooth Now we'll go back and kind of try to blend those a little bit better. Um, I'm going to use the brush now, try to go over that and give it a little bit of blending a little bit. Well, a little bit more up here by the barn door. So fun. Of 
course I'm not going to leave the sky. We'll go back in just a second and we'll do some blue up in the sky. Just trying to get up close to this barn without getting any of that white. I don't want the, I don't want the white to be all muddy. <laughs> But I do want this, the, you know, the blending between the, um, like this side I don't mind as much because it kind of looks like it has an edge where it drops off. But this side I just kind of want the blending between the mud or dirt and the um, pasture to kind of just blend together sort of there. All right, I am loving this, you guys. Let's put away our early espresso. All right, and let's find a very pretty blue for the sky. I think I just want to use something. Um, I was thinking about going for the balmy blue, but I'm, I'm tempted to use our new Tahitian Tide. Hmm, I kind of think the Tahitian Tide might be a little too bright, though. Decisions, decisions. Let's see, because I'd like to use it. Let's just see how bright it is. We've got a bright sun in the sky. Whoo, it's really going to brighten it up. Hmm. We'll have to use it really lightly, I think. Let's just do it, though. Let's do it. We'll just use it very, very lightly. We don't want it that dark for sure. This is so cute. It looks so real. That's what I love about it. I love realistic things. I, I just love it. But it looks so real and it looks like just a beautiful bright morning on the farm oh I love it and I love not letting all this blue come down by the barn too much I'm kind of leaving a glow a little bit around the barn and I like that it looks like the Sun's kind of coming up behind it <laughs> oh I love this you guys it looks so pretty okay I have a feeling the little one's gonna be waking up soon though so we better start wrapping it up okay now I can take this away and <gasps> ta-da! Oh my gosh, I love this. You guys, I love this. I'm so excited. All right, let's see. All of our, um, all of our sentiments in here are Christmas, though. May the joy, may joy fill your heart this season. It's the most wonderful time of the year. And Merry Christmas to you and yours. So I don't want to use any of those sentiments because this is not a Christmas card at all. Um, so let's see if we can find another sentiment. Let's use one of our new ones. Um, let me see if I can find it. I have so many things stacked up. <laughs> um, okay, I set it up here. Here we go. It is cling. But let's see if we can find a nice one that would go on here. Um, I like this thinking of you, I think. Or we could even just do the happy birthday. I like them both. Hmm. The love you, miss you is super cute, too. That would look good on there. Oh, gosh, guys. I can't decide now. Um. Let's just do happy birthday. It's always a good classic. All right, and we're just going to do that in mementos. Very cute. And what would be even more fun is if I put like one of the deer walking up here. It would be so cool if we had cows. I'd love a cow. Okay. Let's hope I can get this straight. I hope I hope oh it's not too bad it's a little off it'll drive me nuts but that's okay 
All right. So the other thing I like to do is um, add a few little birds. That stamp set doesn't have a bird, so I just draw them in. Let me find my black Stampin' Right marker. Had it buried over there. Okay. So I'm going to put, I use just the, the writing end, and we'll put in a few little birds down here. And a big one up there. I love it. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll figure out what kind of background color we want. Let me get all this stuff out of here. And then I'm thinking we'll just do a black border. I'm honestly thinking just a black border and a white card. I think that would look perfect. So what I'm going to do... Oops. Maybe I should put it on a red card, though. Ooh, I think I'd like a red card. Let's do that. All right, so we're going to do a black border, which means we're going to cut this piece of paper at... Um, five and a quarter and then by four all right and then let's see I think we'll use the the let's see a real red how that looks with it Do we want real red or do we want cherry cobbler? Let me see. Cherry cobbler. And here's cherry cobbler. Hmm. So this is going to go behind it. This will go behind it. And do we want it on cherry cobbler? Or do we want it on real red? I think I'm leaning towards the cherry cobbler. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So, we'll set this aside. Let me get a piece of the cherry cobbler. Alright. So, we are going to put it at four and a quarter. And score it. And then we'll turn it sideways and cut it at five and a half. Perfect. Alrighty. looking for everything I've misplaced. <laughs> um, I'm trying to find my uh, silicone sheet and my tape runner, and I'm wondering if I left it. Hmm. I just taught a class the other night, and I think I might have left it with my other stuff. Give me one second, I'll be right back. All right, that was more than just a second, wasn't it? Sorry about that. All right, I make these little kits that I use at my at my classes, and I left mine with 
my other stuff. Okay. So we're just going to tape this down. We use our stamp and seal. All right, we're going to stick that to the black. It's a little lower than I wanted. There we go. There we go. I am loving this stamp set. What do you guys think about it? I'm excited to hear your comments. Or see your comments, I should say. I don't really hear them, but I kind of hear them in my head when I read them. <laughs> All right. And we're going to put this on our cherry cobbler. Wasn't this fun? I love this card. Super cute. Super duper. What do you guys think? I can't wait to hear what you have to say about it. <laughs> and would you guys use this for something other than just snow? Do you guys like barnyard scenes and farm stuff? as much as I do. <laughs> I'm excited to hear what you guys think about this. Um, you will be able to get this stamp set very, very soon. Let me look at the calendar. I think it's, is it Friday or it's got to be Friday. Friday's the first. So yes, it's very, very soon, just within days. So get your orders ready. Um, this one, let's see, is on page if you have your catalog, it's on page 28. So if you guys, um, if you do not have a demonstrator already, I would love to send you a catalog. So let me know in the comments below um, and we will connect and I can get your address in a private message. Don't, don't leave your address below. But um, just leave me a message and we will connect somehow and I will get your address and get you a, a catalog so you guys can take a look at that. Otherwise, everything will be online in the online store um, starting Friday. So I'm excited to see the things that you guys are going to make and what you're going to order from there. Um, be sure and subscribe to my channel and like and share and uh, all that good stuff. I post all... My pictures of all my cards I make, even if they aren't on YouTube and stuff, uh, they're all on Instagram. So if you just want um, ideas for cards and things like that, you can go check out my Instagram and look at all the ones on there. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and happy stamping. We'll catch you next time. Bye.